Yeah, he seems pretty broken up about it. I know, I called him last night and asked him if he wanted to go to a screening of that new LARPing documentary, and he said, no thanks. LARPing documentary? Me and him have seen them all. Darkon, Monster Camp, Drakmar, A Vassal's Journey, Fireball. What was this one? Foam Warriors. He had really been excited about it, but now I think he's too depressed. Well, give him some time. Give who some time? Is it me? Why do I need time? Am I depressed? Or angry? I bet I'm angry. What am I angry about? No, AJ is depressed. Oh. The news about how Alex Jones is pretty much a senior presidential advisor hitting him pretty hard, huh? No, his grandpa died. Oh. How come I didn't hear anything? It was on his Facebook. Uh-huh. But I thought I was one of his besties. You should have sent me an email or something. Well, he didn't send you an email. He put a posting up on Facebook. That's how we found out. Just saying I'm feeling a little slighted because he didn't email me. That's kind of real inconsiderate, if you ask me. Are you serious? This isn't about you and your feelings. AJ is depressed over his grandpa. You should be supportive, not critical about his lack of letting you know. Yeah, but I might have wanted to know about his grandpa's dying. I mean, I have feelings in junk, too. You never even met his grandpa. Sure I did. Well, I'm pretty sure I did. Wait, did I? Was his grandpa's name Cole Pepper? No. Well, it doesn't change the fact that AJ should have emailed me. It's only right. He's upset. There's no right or wrong when a friend is upset. All I'm saying is, if it had been me, I would have emailed him. When AJ gets here, I'm going to tell him that he's handling this whole grief thing completely wrong. You know, there are times to give advice, and there are times when you should shut your stupid fucking mouth. Guess which time this is, Fundy? Well, since there's never a time when I should keep my mouth closed, I'm gonna guess the first one. And you'd be wrong. Look, you need to try. Try to be supportive and loving when you see AJ. I'm always loving and supportive, you butt munches. Aw, oh, shit. AJ's on his way. We can't have Fundy go off in his face when he opens the door. Well, what are we supposed to do? Kill Fundy before he gets here? Is that the answer? Because I'll do it. I will totally do it. No killing. But I think we need to clear what Fundy's gonna say. He'll never go for that. He will if we sell it right. Fundy, I think we need to vet what you're going to say to AJ when he gets here. Vet? Like they do for presidents and popes and celebrities and other super important bigwigs and junk? Yeah. Okay, I'm exactly like them. Let's vet. Okay, when AJ gets here and he starts talking about how upset he is, what is gonna be the first thing you say to him? I have the greatest thing to say to Blubbery Bobs. God never gives you more than you can handle. Um, I'm gonna go scream into a pillow. Be right back. Okay, while Jason is pillow screaming, can I ask you a question? Sure. Can you say anything but that? Why, it's true. No, it's not. What about people who go into crippling lifelong depressions due to the loss of a loved one? What about the people that attempt to take their own lives? Clearly it was way too much for them to handle. Eh, they don't count cause... Um... You don't have an answer, do you? You know why? Because you've never experienced loss. The whole God never gives you more than you can handle thing exists to make you feel better. Not the person you're saying it to. No, huh? And I have so experienced loss. Getting your church blown up doesn't count. Rats. People who say that shit either haven't experienced loss or they've survived loss and they expect everybody in the world to behave the way they did. And what's worse, they then attribute their survival to God instead of themselves. But there's nothing wrong with that saying. What am I supposed to say? Sometimes God gives way more than you can handle and sucks to be you? It would be more honest. Yeah, I mean, almost all of human history is comprised of people who are getting way more than they can handle. So the saying is not only insensitive, it's grossly inaccurate. Are vetting sessions always this aggressive? Um, yeah. All the super important people in the world do this. President Trump loves rough and aggressive vetting sessions. The rougher, the more he likes it. Oh, well, if it's good enough for Trump, it's good enough for me. Okay, what are you going to do if AJ starts looking upset and teary-eyed? 
I'm going to demand that he talk about how upset he is, even if he says he doesn't want to, or I'm going to confront him about his grief and get him to admit that he's grieving. No, why would you do that? Because that's what they do on TV. Oh, Christ, on Christmas Eve. Never, ever base how you deal with someone's grief from what you see on TV, you simpleton. What's wrong with TV? Somebody is upset, you say something all heartfelt and stuff, and then you hug or something. What's wrong with learning about how to interact with people who are dealing with grief from television is that television gets grief all wrong and teaches you how to behave wrongly. I mean, if you follow TV, you'd accuse them of being selfish, and then you'd hug. Or you'd say just the right thing, and then they would be all better forever, and then you'd hug. And that is unrealistic just like with everything else TV presents. And movies, too. Fuck, almost all of media gets grief wrong. No, see, media has taught me that grief is something that you go through for a couple of weeks, then you kind of just get over it. Unless you're like a dude who's depressed for like years, and then a quirky girl teaches you how to live again. And love again. So now I suppose that you're expecting AJ to get over the death of his grandfather in like a couple of weeks. Yeah, and if he doesn't, then he's doing it all wrong. When my mom died, I had to deal with that shit all the time. People who have some baseless, preconceived notion about what is the acceptable amount of time to grieve. The truth is that sometimes, Fundy, you never stop grieving. Sometimes, the hurt is always there. No, 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 no. That's not how it's supposed to work. If AJ is still upset after two weeks, then we really gotta be on that crap. We gotta always be asking him how he's doing. We gotta check in on him on the anniversary of his grandpa's passing to make sure he's okay. We gotta treat him like a fragile little egg that could bust apart into a million sobbing little pieces. Grandpa, not grandma. Whatever. Everything you just said is completely wrong. Uh, then what am I supposed to do to make him feel better? Your job isn't to make him feel better. Your job is to just be his friend. That is pretty vague. Grief is not some problem for you to fix. If he wants to talk about it, we'll listen. If he wants to deal with it on his own, we'll let him do that. It's up to him, not us. We're not going to give some stupid advice or dumb grief one-liners. So I guess getting him a quirky girlfriend to teach him how to live and love again is out of the question, huh? He already has a tumnal. I said quirky, not delusional. No quirky girl. We will be his friends. Let him process his grief on his own. And butt out if that's what he wants. Well, I ain't good at any of that. All I have is stupid advice and grief one-liners. You're tying my hands here. Can we do that? You know, tie his hands and maybe gag him just to be safe? What do you guys think? Are there examples from movies and TV where you think grief is treated realistically? And what ways do you think work best when dealing with a gloomy Gus? And what in the heck is everybody talking about? Oh, hey, AJ. Hey, so uh, what is today's topic? Oh, well, it was supposed to be about liberal hypocrisy. Yeah, but then we started talking about how we're supposed to deal with your grief-ridden keister. You are a dead monster. We heard about your grandpa, AJ. Yeah, and we're all here for you if you need us. And I would even be more here for you, but I'm pretty sure these two boners would kill me if I were. Well, thanks guys, but I'm fine. Okay. How can you be fine? Your grandpa has gone croakers. He's taking the Casket Express to dead town. He's playing pinochle with those words from that gross children's song. Fundamental Q monster. Did you learn nothing from the vetting process? Guys, it's okay. My grandpa isn't dead. But he's not? Then I got all ready to be your grief consigliere for nothing. But your Facebook page said he passed. It's all a clever deception. My grandpa wants everyone to believe he's dead so he can work under the radar against the evil cabal that is secretly ruling the planet. The order of McDonald's fry cooks. But there's going to be a viewing tomorrow. At a funeral home. It's all a ruse. After he's interred, I have no doubt that my pap-pap will rise up out of the coffin as fit as a fiddle. It's the only explanation. But, AJ, you... I said it's the only explanation. Okay, what do we do about this? He's in hyper-denial. No, I'm not. Say that again and I'll destroy you. I'll destroy you all. 
Oh shit, angry hyper denial. Um, um, escape? Guys, we are his friends. We are not going to jump ship. I know. Hi. Any minute now, you'll see. Pap Pap will come through that door and he'll be alive and you guys can suck my wanger. I like Fundy's instincts on this. AJ, we're under the table if you need us. Hello, my fellow Opinion Villagers. Today is Friday, March 3rd, 2017, and it's... I Want to Be Happy Day, International Ear Care Day, National Day of Action, National Mold Wine Day, National Anthem Day, Princess Day, Shabbat Across America slash Canada Day, What If Cats and Dogs Had Opposable Thumbs Day, Dress in Blue Day, National Day of Unplugging, World Day of Prayer, and World Wildlife Day. Famous dead people celebrating their birthdays today are Phone Dude Alexander Graham Bell and Actor Dude Canada Lee. And now on to your questions. First up, Finite Atticus asks, Intimate question for me, Jason. Will you make a puppet of Jeff that I can voice for you? If you don't, I will make one of my own and you'll hate it. And you'll hate me. Imagine what the glue will be made of. Short answer, no. Long answer, no. Microbogonism asks, intimate question for Puppet Jason. What about the horrible things Fundy said back in 1989? Are you still mad at him? Doesn't he still need to apologize? Oh uh, yeah, he was a huge bucket of shit back then. And no, he hasn't apologized, but the problem with Fundy is, is that he seldom apologizes for anything. And just when you start calming down about some horrible crap he said, he replaces it with more horrible crap. He's like a purple, furry, horrible crap machine. Stephen Hatrack asks, intimate question for Bob Satan. Did you have anything to do with Trump? And do you still like baloney? Hey man, I don't even know what a Trump is and stuff. And I'll eat baloney, you know, if I'm high enough, which is like always and stuff. The Mud Broker asks, a question for Jason. My birthday is coming up in a couple of weeks. Have you finished shopping for my presents yet? Oh, you know, Muddy, I did, but I don't have your mailing address, so I left them under a box in the middle of town square about three weeks ago. They're probably still there. Kasim Jaber, 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 Kasim Jaber, Ass, intimate question for Meet Jason. Have you ever seen Meet the Feebles? And if you did, did it influence the show in any way? Yeah, I've seen Meet the Feebles, and no, it didn't really. I mean, unless this show gets a lot more violent and bloody, and there's graphic sex, and the puppets start blowing themselves, I'm sure it would be great for the views, but it's not really an exp uh, you know, an inspiration for the show. Um, a bigger inspiration for the show... <laughs> Zelina Davis asks, Send me a question for tough guy, Aussie, sheep, whatever the hell your name is. What's that spot on your shirt? And why did you leave your shoelaces untied? What do you think I am, sunshine? A seven-year-old? Two flaws with your hilarious gag. I never wear a shirt. And I never wear shoes. Ever. And I don't care what them signs say. I always get service. Okay, that's it this time around. Remember, if you have a question you want to ask Intimate Questions, leave it down below in the comments section. Until next time, my giggling Godzillas, this has been Jason with a D. everybody it's me and what there's more no there isn't I am more than enough no you need to introduce me and then do the shout outs I know let's just let the peeps absorb more of my cuteness do you think they've absorbed enough yeah I don't want them to overdose and die hello Stu, oh my god, my name is so boring, I want to jump off a bridge. Don't jump off a bridge, Mr. Oh, my name is so boring, I want to jump off a bridge. At least don't do it until they get there. Oswald! 
what? I'm going to be there to support our brand new old friend, Mr. Oh, my name is so boring, I want to jump off a bridge. Oh. Totally support his sweet jump off that bridge. Ooh, can you jump off the bridge while on fire? As well. But fire! Everything is so much more way cooler when it's on fire. Deity puppet. Are we not all of God's puppets as we jerk and perform upon his stage? That's kind of profound, Oswald. Well, I'm not a puppet of God. And if God tried to make me a puppet, I'm going to punch him right in his baby factory. Ivan Canella. What are you doing? Oh, I'm snoring because that name is like the most boring name ever. Hey, Ivan, comes back when you've changed the name to something more internet acceptable, like, um, Butt Monkey Popsicle 69. Okay, that's it. I hope everybody is hungry for more cuteness, because I've cooked up a whole new batch. This is kind of vain, don't you think? No, it's not. The peeps and the creeps want to stare at my radiant cheeks. Who am I to deny them pleasure? So you're only doing this for them. You don't... You don't think you're cute. Oh no, I know I'm cute. Then you're vain. You're vain. I'm not the one saying I'm cute and then posing in front of a video camera. But you just said it. No, see, I'm not the one saying that I'm cute. Oh, so I guess you want me to say that you're cute. Here with even more suggestions from viewers like you. Damien Freeman says, One good idea is to always heat your tortilla wraps after coating them in chocolate spread to get a big, cheap, and easy crepes. Wow! You're like another Chef Boyardee with recipe hints like that, Damien! I'm not being sarcastic. I'm gonna run home with a pack of tortillas in one hand and a jar of Nutella in the other and have me a good old-fashioned tortilla party. Personally, I fill my tortillas full of cream and wham bam, I got a cannoli, but thanks to you, I have a new tasty treat. Super Troy 1974 says, Suggestion, Oswald cast. I would listen the shit out of that. Half hour though, leave them wanting more. I have a feeling that even at three hours long, you would be wanting more, Super Troy. Morgan Ravenwolf says, I have a suggestion for Trudeau. Meet me on the couch. I'll bring the whipped cream. You bring the joystick. We'll totally play games. I'm so glad we're back to the original format. Get my joystick, Mabel! Hey everybody, it's me, Oswald, and I'm telling you punks to go listen to these podcasts. Let me listen, late seating, 3-4 video, um, scientific, film Tyson Voyage, Bongo's Adventure in Kidneyland, Hey, Where'd My Fingers Go, Lunchtime Stuff with a Guy Who's Buff, um, Pianos Are Fun to Throw, and Blah! Um, only the very first ones were actually podcasts that, uh, we produced, and I think you left a couple of them out. I didn't leave anything out. Those are all the podcasts. They're all real podcasts. I didn't make any of them up. They're all super real, and I listen to them all the time. Okay, so, um, tell me, what is, uh, Pianos Are Fun To Throw about? Oh, that's simple. It's about a guy who likes to throw pianos, and he's like, This time, you're gonna listen to me throw a piano off of the Parks Peak Bridge. Is there really a place called the Parks Peak Bridge? Why don't you look it up? Why are you doubting everything I say? Alright, fine. So every episode, he throws a piano off of something? Yeah! Sometimes he throws it off a bridge. Sometimes he throws it off a building. Sometimes he throws it just up in the air over his head and it comes crashing down on him. And then you listen to an hour of a guy saying, Help! I am trapped underneath the piano. And I am pretty sure that my blood parts are running into my gut parts. And both parts are running into the sewer drain. Okay, great. Any other podcasts you want to just throw out there? Sure, why don't you listen to my podcast, The Oswald Podcast, where I just eat snacks into a microphone for 15 hours. Do you say anything? No, but just pretty much me making food sounds like... 
every once in a while, if someone tries to take some of my food, I go, you better get your hands off my food! It's a pretty popular podcast. Really? Yeah, it's got like a whole listen. One whole listen? Yup. I listened to it once, and then I guess someone else did. Now that would mean you'd have two listens. I think the one listen is from you. You're always trying to cut me down. <laughs>